We're joined now by David Figgins Barrett from Premier Pitches. David, thanks for joining us today. Uh, I know you're coming into a, an incredibly busy period for you. Yeah. And uh, we'll touch on that uh, shortly. Um, but for those people who don't know Premier, can you give us a little bit of a background of the kind of things that you you do? Uh, Premier Pitches, our, our core business is uh, pitch renovations. So as you say, we're coming up to our, our busiest period of the year when all the, all the football clubs want their stadiums and training ground pitches renovated. We do uh, other areas of business uh, to keep ourselves uh, busy throughout the year. So we do pitch construction works, pitch reconstruction, renovation work. And we also do uh, pitch maintenance and sort of specialist uh, contracting services for not just football, rugby, but any sports, turf, industry uh, people. So we're coming into that manic period for you. Um, let's have a chat about how a, a typical season might go. When does the phone start ringing for renovations for you and, and how do you actually plan them all in? It's quite difficult. Thankfully, I don't have the job of, uh, of planning them in. That's uh, that's Russell Latham's uh, job, our sales director. He's in charge of that. So um, the, the phone uh, starts ringing pretty much from the, the end of the last renovation period. So usually we, we start picking up some early work in, in sort of March time. Um, usually the, the clubs that are down south because it's slightly warmer, so hopefully they can get a renovation okay. early and start growing. It's all dependent on the, on the natural conditions. Um, but we'll start picking up some early work um, and then we're, we're literally right now at the cusp of, of the, the proper renovation period starting. So we've got, um, I think it's four project teams um, starting this, this weekend. We've, uh, we've got a job on at the moment, which we're just about to finish um, at Nottingham Forest. Um, and then we've got four project teams out from next week. And then that'll be it now for probably three months worth of, of, of work. Um, you know, the lads that work for us have to work long hours, um, seven days a week most of the time. We try and give them breaks when we can, but it's an intense period of work. So that, that three months, how many renovations or how many jobs are you, you expecting to do through a normal year? And, you know, by no means has the last year or so been normal. So let's, let's think back a couple of years. What would you be doing? Oh, it's, it is, it's an ever increasing amount, um, usually because we've, we've now managed to sort of extend that period. So we're getting the early ones and the later ones and having clubs tend to now, if they've got big training grounds, they can have, uh, you know, sort of start releasing pitches, like I say, March sort of time and actually finish doing the renovation period. It could be as, as late as uh, sort of July, even into August, that they may want to just say, right, well, we'll actually renovate that pitch now. Um, last count, so not last year, last year was a completely different year. I think it was over 160 pitches that we'd, that we'd renovated yeah. in one year, which, you know, is, is some going. Some go. It is, yeah. Um, so when you, you actually kind of get into the thick of it through the summer there, um, you're obviously at the behest to a degree of the weather. How do you manage, if you've got delays, a knock-on effect for other people? Because you've got a finite amount of time until the season starts in football, for instance. You know, how do you deal with that? Exactly. So we, we, we have a, a sort of running joke where we don't, we don't have changes. We don't have uh, uh, amendments or anything like that. We have progressions. And so we, we have to be ready to, to, to jump onto the next job. So if it's, if it's raining in London... We might have to go to Bristol if it's if it's you know the conditions aren't right or there's a delay on a, a job in Birmingham. We might have to move to Manchester. And we have to be ready to do that. So, like I say, the the teams that we have are um, used to working in that flexible way, and so we we have to be prepared to do that. Um, we we try and break up the teams so it may not be the same team that run the project. So if it's a, that's like say a stadium pitch. We may not have the same team starting it as finishing it. We may have a team that goes in first to start the Corowin and the initial phase and then another team that follows up to do the finishing and the seeding um, because that allows that greater flexibility. So we, we, we can usually split off into five core teams, but if needs be, those, those five teams can then sort of split down uh, with the supplement, supplementary other people in there to probably eight or nine teams. Um, which that, that allows that flexibility through that period, which is essential to us getting those jobs done. 
So within within that time span, you've got the weather, you've got a season that you know is a defined deadline, but you've also got other issues that you know stadiums in particular in normal times will be, will be having events and concerts and uh, sponsor matches and things like that. Those knock-ons of the weather. I mean, it's got to be a real big Rubik's cube, surely, that you're you're trying to pull together. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. It's a it's a it's a four D Rubik's cube with with weather thrown in. Um, there's sometimes where you've got projects at, at stadiums, not in normal periods where the like you said, you could have um, concerts on or, or big events on prior to or after the renovation. Some some stadiums will have a situation where. We'll do the initial phase of the renovation, stripping the pitch off um, and prepping it up. And then we'll we'll have a concert and then we'll have to go in and finish the works off. So do all the aeration, the, the final pitch prep and the seeding after the, after they've got, you know, sort of four or five concerts out of the way. So it, it's there's a lot of different things at play. Um, and that will sometimes mean that we've got to do quite tight turnarounds on, on projects. So it may be that we've got to do 24 hour working, um, you know, split teams. So we'll have, a, you know, sort of a day shift and a night shift, things like that. Um, but we we always have those book, those sort of projects booked in nice and early so we can plan for that. And once that's booked in, you know, we know that that, uh, that team, the, the resources are there ready for that, uh, for that project. Does that mean you're having to kind of work with and cooperate with a different set of people to you know that their prime concern isn't getting the turf ready their prime concern is you know getting Elton's stage ready so that he can you know do what he wants to do yeah you know some of the the, the bigger stadiums now and the bigger uh the bigger clubs um they they have obviously large corporate structures they no longer is, is a football club just um you know a small team that's that's concerned with the on the pitch um playing aspect of the club you know they're, they're very large organizations so you'll have uh, facilities managers facilities directors uh, stadium managers uh, you know there'll be constant uh, and events people that we that will be dealing with obviously the the health and safety side of it as well we usually have uh, you know sort of very good health and safety teams that we have to submit detailed plans to um, and we have to make sure that we're working with not just them from the, the club's point of view but also sometimes other contractors that are involved in that situation as well. Um, you know, for those sorts of situations, the, the planning is, you know, quite meticulous. Um, and there'll be lots of uh, timing aspects with deliveries and collections and things like that that have to be have to be factored in. So you've got a busy three months. Come, what, August, you'll put your feet up and you have the, the rest of the year off, do you? That that'd be, that'd be <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> I'd love to say that, and I'm sure I'm sure our lads would love to say that as well. Um, we do try and make sure that there is a work life balance, especially for the, the guys that are out on the projects, because they do have to work very very hard through that period, and you know we couldn't do it without them. Um, so we try and make sure that out of that period they have reduced working hours, they have their their holidays. You know, there are uh, times where we say to them, look, you know, you you need to take these holidays, get themselves booked in. And you'd be surprised that, you know, um, a lot of a lot of grounds people um, are very dedicated to their job, as as you'll know. Um, so they love being there. They love working on the pitches. Um, we do look after um, a number of sites where we do the actual grounds maintenance work. So we do uh, Chesterfield FC. Um, we do Sheffield FC um, and a number of smaller local facilities as well that are close to, to our site. Um, so we, that keeps us busy. We do other contracting services. Um, we try not to sort of work them too hard through the, the rest of the year. Otherwise, I think it could be a mutiny. <laughs> <laughs> and then when tour time comes around, because I'm sure it must be like being on tour for the guys, you know, living out of suitcases and hotels and etc., um, they're all raring to go. I mean, I assume they kind of look forward to it in a in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they you know, they, the the camaraderie that they that they have, they have to work together, live together. So the the team that we have is is very important. Um, the the types of characters that you put into the team. Uh, I know before we started, we were talking about, a little bit about football. And we were talking about characters and stuff like that. It's very much the same uh, with our job because you've you've got to have. The right mix of people 
and they've got to be able to, to work together and live together. So, um, you know, it's, it's quite intense. Um, they'll be spending a lot of time together. So um, we, we have a good team and, you know, we they enjoy the work, the thrill of the work, the, the stadium, the, um, the training grounds that they get to visit as, as, is, um, you know, they feel it is a privilege. You sort of sometimes you take it for granted, but, you know, as a football fan, um, as a sports fan, a cricket fan, rugby fan, you know, they, they love going to these places and it is a privilege to do that. Um, but they, it's, it's an exciting time. This, this time you can, you can sense like this sort of nervous excitement at, at this time now that they, they're ready. All the stuff's prepared. The machinery is ready. They've been working hard to do that um, and they're ready to go. So that's another thing that, that we spend a lot of time throughout that, uh, like you say, that nine months off is, yeah. is, <laughs> is about um, preparing for, for the next three months. Um, so a lot, all of our uh, machinery that we, that we use intensively at that period has to be ready to go. You know, any breakdown during that period, you know, could cost us a number of men being idle for for a number of days. So we have to we have to service those machines. So like all our corals will get a full service. So it might be, you know, new belts, new bearings, um, fully checked over, you know, new motors sometimes. Um, you know, we, we make sure that that they're ready to go for that that uh, season. And we, we also have, uh, I think, a proud history of, of uh, innovation and development as well with the machinery that we have. Um, you know, Carl um, has uh, a mind that never stops. Um, so he's, he's constantly looking for, for new innovations and new new products or new ways that we can work that, um, that mean that we'll, we'll spend a lot of that time as well developing and uh, re-engineering the machines that we have. You mentioned getting the balance in the team is, is right. Um, what's recruitment like for you? How, how easy is it to find the right people? It's it, recruitment is never easy, no matter what industry you're in. You know, I've, I've worked in a couple of different industries and it's never, never easy. Um, we we've had we've been very lucky that we've we've had a lot of people within our team over the years who, who stay with us, who um, are that core of that team. And that's that's really essential. And that sets the uh, the ethos and that sets the, the character of the company. Um, and then we have to go out there and we have to try and find the right people. Uh, now, what we've done in the past is we've, we've always tried to look within the industry for, for certain roles. Um, but then sometimes it's, you, you, you go wider than that and you find um, the, you try and find the right type of person. Because no matter who we take on, they're not going to have done what we do. Uh, there, there's several renovation contractors out there, you know, some, some very good um top level renovation contractors that that work in the same field as us but a lot of them are like primarily either turfing contractors or pitch construction contractors that's their their core business they also do renovations and a lot of the stuff that we do we do differently to them so even if we had an applicant who had worked at one of the other top contractors the chances are the working practices would be different. So for us, it's about finding that right type of person, the right character, and then training them up. Because whoever we get, we're going to have to train them in the way that Premier Pitch is working. It's about giving them that time to learn as well. So we try and make sure we, we, we can bed them into a team so they understand the way of working and the, the Premier Pitch's ethos. I think the profile of the profession, um, and it is a profession, uh, <laughs> you know, it's not a trade, it's a skilled profession as far as I'm concerned. Uh, there's been a, an initiative from the GMA, Grounds Week, um, last month, about a month ago now. Uh, we were part of that, as I think you were as well. What, what was your reasons for getting involved with that one, David? We have a, a good relationship with the GMA. We've, we've uh, you know, had a long-standing relationship with, with them. Um, and we... When they when they approached us about Grounds Week, it you know it completely we completely identified with the some of the issues that they're they're raising about the uh, perception of the industry, the perception of uh, grounds persons, the professionality of the industry, the what's involved, and um, one of the the key factors that we can see and the their research shows it 
is that we're not getting enough young people into our industry. So on one side, we wanted to, pro to project the fact that, uh, you know, our industry is an extremely professional industry. Not only are you dealing with um, the, the top level clubs, it, no matter what stage and level of, of um, club that, that you're dealing with, there are professionals or high level players that are playing on that surface. And you're dealing with the natural elements, you're dealing with business models, you're dealing with the science, the agronomy of the, the pitch. Um, you know, and there's, there's a lot of information there. When I first came into this in industry, probably what was it 16, 17 years ago, I was quite, uh, uh, you know, sort of surprised at the, um, the level of detail that goes into um, sports turf and the, the knowledge that is required. And I think still, unfortunately, some people still view uh, a grounds person as, as someone who's, you know, sort of flat cap and whip it and, and goes out and cuts some grass and that's it. And it's it very frustrating to, to see that um, sort of projected. And whenever I talk to people, I'm always sort of quiet, sort of <laughs> um, virulent with, with my sort of not only defense, but my promotion of the industry. I'm very yeah. proud of the industry that we work in and the people that we work with. And there's some super, super intelligent people working in our industry. And when you get to that top level of the clubs, they're no longer just grounds persons. They're no longer just grounds managers. They, they have big teams, big structures. They are they are effective managers, you know, the resource that they are dealing with, the, the budgets that they're dealing with. It's, it's a, a very intense job, um, especially at the, at the top of the industry. It's intense, it's pressured, um, which is, you know, what you're, you're coming into now, I guess you're intense and, and pressured time. What do you think gives Premier Pitches the edge over some of your, you know, your competitors, perhaps? Um, I think it's a couple of things, I hope. Um, I think um, obviously the longevity of the business. The the we've been doing this for a long time. You know, Carl set up the business a long, long time ago, and has built that that, that business up on providing um, a, a, a top level service. One of the things that I try and put across to um, all of our new recruits when we do take people on is that we we're not just going in and renovating a pitch. We're not just removing that that top surface and putting a new one on ready for them to, to grow it in. It's all about customer service as well. It's the, the analogy I use a lot of time is if you had a trade person in your house or you had a contract to come into your house and do work, what, what standards do you expect from them? You expect them to do the job right. That's a given. That's a given. You're paying for the job. You expect it to be right. But you also expect that level of customer service as well. So, you know, you expect polite welcoming people you expect them to leave the place nice and tidy and you expect them to work with you and in in the work environment with that team that's around you as well so it's those little bits the communication prior to during and after a project is essential and it's building up that relationship because every single person at a club or a facility is you know sort of part of that customer uh, that customer team that customer relationship so whether it's the new starter that they've just taken on or whether it's somebody who's been there for 30, 40 years, I expect every single one of our team members to interact with them in a, a, a professional way and, and build up that relationship because that guy who's just started on his, uh, his apprenticeship scheme, in 10 years' time, he could be the head groundsman somewhere else or, or you know, at, at a top club. And it's just about professional respect as well. Everyone's starting out in in various different aspects, and you you know it's it's about building that relationship, and then you enjoy your work more. Then once you build the relationship, it's it's not always about what you do. I mean, we're lucky we work in a great industry, get to go to some great places and see some amazing things, but you enjoy your work much more if you're building those relationships up with the customers as well. And if you were gonna you know have a wish list of you know what your customers, you know, the head groundsman at wherever, came to you with to help you make it a successful renovation. What's the kind of top things that you, you need from them? Uh, clear communication, first and foremost. Um, so yes, they'll, they'll have their, their opening dates of when they can start their pitch renovation, whether it's a training ground or it's a stadium. Um, if there's any restrictions on site, obviously at the moment with the, the COVID situation, we're having to deal with 
many different and varied restrictions on, on sites. Um, so it's clear communication of that, a clear understanding of that. And honestly, if, you know, if you've got ever a situation where there's something that's not gone as they expect, then I would, ex I would hope that they would, would identify that straight away, tell us and we can rectify it. Cause that's, you know, as much as we are, I do think an industry leading um, company and we have an industry leading teams, you, you're never going to get everything a hundred percent perfect every time. So the customer has the right to turn around to you and say, actually, I'm not happy with that. It might be something that's just a misunderstanding. They thought something was in the spec and it wasn't in the spec. We thought something wasn't included and it should be included. You know, we'll sort that out. We we'll always work with the customer. Um, from a practical point of view, obviously there's, there's stuff like sort of, you know, safe loading areas, uh, facilities for, for the staff to, to be able to um, have breaks and things like that, you know, very uh, little things, but most, most of the clubs that we work with are great at that. Um, just open and honest communication. That, uh, that, works, that works great, really. There's a real reputation for British groundsmanship, particularly when it, you look at football being the best in the world. Uh, and I, I believe that. I think, you know, we've led the way. Uh, the Premier League obviously showcases that to the rest of the world. We've seen groundsmen being taken overseas from, from the UK, plenty of examples of that. Are you finding that you're getting more and more inquiries, perhaps for, you know, working abroad? Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, over the last couple of years, we've, I mean, we've always, we've always worked across across Europe into to we've worked in Russia quite a few times, Scandinavia. Um, now the obviously at the moment it's it's fairly difficult. Movement is is difficult. Um, the the Brexit situation, you know, we still sort of come into terms of understanding the movement implications of that. But at the moment the COVID situation has just put a, a brick wall really on on movement. And for us the the difficulty is that time element because there was a few years ago where we were doing a lot of work in Germany, in the Czech Republic, in France. And during that window of opportunity, so we've got that, like say three months or so, um, there's only so many pitches that we can do. So if we're spending a day traveling and a day traveling back, then that might be one pitch that we've not been able to do. And if the order book is that full from UK work, then we, you know, we're going to be more efficient if we're, if we're doing that. Um, we, I've had inquiries um, from from the the biggest clubs in Europe asking us to to go to them and do the work. If we can and the time frame suits, we will do that. But we've got to make sure that we're um, servicing the clients that we've already got. Um, one of the things that we have had as well is we've had people from Europe come and work with us for a summer or or re repeated summers, and because they want that industry knowledge from the UK, so we've had. Um, we a number of French guys that have come over and worked with us and then gone back and, and worked at, at top level clubs in France as well. So they're trying to get here to learn the the British way of doing stuff, the you know, the, the UK groundsmanship. They understand that, that that is the case, that we are flying the flag for um, groundsmanship and, and pitch management um, for, for the world, really. So it's, it's great to see that. And hopefully that can, can recommence. Coming into your pressured time, um, does the phone ever ring and say, you know, can you turn up next week or whatever? And it's kind of, how do you deal with that? Because I'm sure there's, there's a degree of late sign off, probably more now so than ever. Yeah, yeah. Um, it does happen. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's not next week. Sometimes it's tomorrow. Um, you know, a lot of the time we have, we have forewarning of, of these because it's, it's our repeat customers. Um, and it may just be that. I don't know, say a, a, a club manager or a senior executive has said, actually, well, that, that pitch in the training ground, let's get that one done as well. And so it's like, oh, can you do another pitch for us? Can you do that pitch? Well, that one's become free. We're no longer holding that event. So can you come a bit earlier? And if we can do it, we do. Um, if we can't, then we'll, we'll be honest with them and say, look, we, we're not going to be able to do that on that day, but we may be able to do it you know, a, a few days after, a week after, or whatever it is. And again, as I've mentioned before, honest communication, that's the main thing, because we don't want to turn around to a club and say, yeah, yeah, of course we can do that. We, we'll, we'll, we'll be with you uh, next week. We'll, we'll be there on Monday. And then you're not there till Friday. They're going to be pretty upset. Um, we try and build the relationship with the customers that 
um, if if they've got a, a start date, we ask them to understand that we'll be flexible, um, and you know we will make sure that we complete their job um, to the satisfactory and to the very best standards. So it may mean that we're completing some other guy's job or other team's job um, the the week before. So if we um, if we're sort of delayed by a day, it's not because we're sort of you know sat at home having a brew and thinking, oh no, I can't bother joining doing that <laughs> job yet. It's we're making sure the last guy's job is finished um, to the highest standard, and then we'll come and we'll do exactly the same to you. Um, and that doesn't matter whether it's you know sort of a, a, a let's say a non-league club or you know sort of the top of the Premier League club. We make sure that we get those jobs done because they're all customers. They're all very important to us. Some of them we've worked with for. For, since the start of the company and we want to make sure we look after those customers what's the quickest time frame you've had to turn one around in david we we did have a concert s- scenario so it wasn't a full renovation um where we had to go in and we had to do it within 24 hours so in and out within 24 hours so and we were successful, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, were you kind of looking at the weather forecast and going, oh, geez? <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. Of course. Um, because it was the first stage, it was a, the, the stripping off and, and removal as well. Um, you know, this this it's not like you've got to get the finish on on uh, on there. With if you were doing that and you had a twenty four hour window, you'd be you'd be a bit worried. Um, stripping off, it's you know, yes, there's a, a level of finesse and and an amount of tightness that you have to achieve but um yeah we, we we got in there we worked around the clock and we got the job done and typically that compares to what would you normally allow for a stadium renovation Ooh, it, well it depends on the stadium really there's lots of different things so um you know access is a big thing loading areas are, are a big thing so whether you can have um the materials ready dropped off on site or you've got to have them sort of put in uh, one lorry load at a time, whether you can, your muck away can be all stockpiled and then removed, or whether you can, you know, it has to go away, um, uh, you know, before the new material comes in. So quickest turnaround, you're probably talking, you know, two to three days, depending on the hours of work as well, um, because we, you know, we, we do work long hours um, and the, the, the lads work really hard if, if it's necessary to, to work those long hours and get the project done. You realise now you've said this on camera, you're going to get guys saying, yeah, you said do it in two or three days. So, <laughs> you just made a rod. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to work them to death. <laughs> Sustainability is something I just wanted to touch on with you. Um, it's a big issue for the world, let alone the turf care industry. Have you seen that the demands for sustainable practices have become bigger and bigger on you from your customers? There are certain elements of that. A lot of the time, the customers will specify uh, materials and, and what happens with the materials. There are there can be restrictions on sites as to, to whether stuff can be recycled or reused. Um, so some training grounds, what they might want to do is stockpile some of the material that's come off. So they'll test that to make sure it's it's, it's you know good, clean material, safe to use. And then they may stockpile that for either building new pitches or or creating areas that are, are sort of off pitch for training areas with with at clubs that have created, you know, like sort of running mounds and things like that, um, that are, are useful for for their uh, teams to train. Um, so it's it's a difficult one because, you know, you're dealing with sometimes uh, products that that are very difficult to recycle. So um, the the I think the industry is pushing towards a more sustainable uh, future, which is is only a good thing. And, you know, as a company, we have investigated and, and will continue to investigate new avenues for um, sustainable products for, for pitch construction, pitch renovation, and the reinforcement of pitches as well. COVID, can't avoid talking to you about it. Um, last year, you know, during renovation season, I think uh, it probably had something of an impact. Did it kind of trash it or did it kind of just make it normal? It certainly had a big, big impact. Um, it was managerially, organisationally, it was one of the toughest years I've ever had in my, my working career. Um, I've worked in, in events industries previously. I've worked in design previously, so both quite intense industries. 
Um, but that was by far the toughest um, year ever. And that was because obviously it, stuff was changing all the time. And now we're used to changes and progressions, as I've mentioned, so about our progressions before. Um, but everything was up in the air. We didn't know. We had, when the, the government announced that there was going to be lockdowns, we had jobs lined in for, for the next day. And we had to just turn around and unfortunately say to that customer, we're not coming. And that is the first time that we've done that. And, you know, we, we really didn't want to, but we had to look after the, the safety of our staff, um, the safety of our staff and, and their staff as well is, was, was, was paramount. And until we could find um, safe working practices to make sure that we could do the job effectively and safely, uh, we, were, we, were, we weren't prepared to, to send the staff there. Um, we followed the advice that was available at the time um, we use the industry bodies that are available to us. So the GMA, we're also safe contractor approved. So we looked at their stuff. We do some stuff with uh, CITB for training. So they obviously put out a lot of stuff, a lot of information that was helped us to formulate our, our plans and our working practices um, to try and make sure that our staff were safe. Um, it did. It did have a big effect. Well, obviously with the way that the football. Um, schedule was adjusted it, it it stretched things out we did a lot less work in in that period uh, but it was more spaced out so we were able to do it with less of our crew normally we have a team of polish guys that come over there's there's, there's 15 of them some of them have worked for us for over 15 years and they weren't able to come so mm -hmm. that was a real staffing issue so we had to recruit new staff and not really have a window of opportunity for, for training them um, to you know the standards we had. So we had to really manage those guys in, in different teams and try and make sure that we, we did that in a really sort of safe way. Um, it was, like I say, it was, it was very difficult, um, but I think we were, were very successful in that. And I was very proud of the work that, that all of our staff put in and the trust that they put in us as a management team as well was, was great because, you know, they, you could have had staff that turn and say, I'm not doing that. No, yeah. no, I'm out, I'm out of here. Um, you know, the, the, a lot of companies had to completely shut down. We were able to maintain working. We had, we only had, I think it was a week of that very first week where we would put ourselves on a skeleton staff to just maintain the pitches that we, that we have. And then we slowly sort of reintroduced and worked out, working patterns to make sure that our staff were were safe and we we still managed to to turn a profit which i think all things considered was was fantastic um we um always invest in new machinery and stuff and we'd already sort of committed investment in in a, a number of things so at that very first few weeks where we were saying oh is this going to go ahead are we going to have renovation windows what's going to happen you know it's a pretty nerve-wracking time um but we came out of it very, very well, much less on our turnover because we did less work, but we managed it in a very successful way. And we still, to, to still come out and make it was, was, um, was great. So the knock on to, to this year, um, it's getting a bit back more to normal, but how is it impacting this year? Have you now got lots of people who want renovations that they couldn't have last year? So you've got even more demand and less capacity still because are you able to get the Polish guys over this year? Uh, well, we're not able to get the Polish guys over. Um, we, we have got, um, I'd say, obviously higher demand than last year. Um, whether it's higher demand than, than previous years, I think possibly yes, just a bit higher demand. And, you know, it may well be a case that for, for the clubs that haven't booked in, um, we are going to struggle or we're going to have to move dates and do renovations later um, because our diary is, is looking pretty chocker. Um, so the Polish guys are not going to be able to come over. Um, we, we, there, there are ways uh, of getting them over from, from a um, sort of uh, Brexit sort of, you know, sort of... Um, standpoint uh, with regards to visas and what have you we can get we can get them over from that point of view because of the number of years that they've worked with us um, and some of them have, have lived in the UK for for periods of time but the COVID situation means that they um, 
don't want to come over um, and it's not practical with the, the sort of time frames that they would have to quarantine. So we knew this was going to, or knew this was likely to happen um, six months ago. So of course we started looking at recruitment at that point and we put a lot of effort into sort of uh, looking for those staff. Um, I produced a couple of, of videos um, to really highlight the industry as well and highlight what we do to try and get, as I mentioned before, the right kind of people um, interested in, in working for us. And that recruitment drive really did, did pay dividends because we've, we've, we've managed to take on some fantastic lads. Um, some, it's in, and a good mix of, of age ranges, as I mentioned before about the youth element within our industry. So there's a couple of lads who are, are quite young, but they'll be split, split out onto different teams um, and they will learn the industry. But we, we've tried to give ourselves some extra capacity within that team um, because I can't see that this is going to change dramatically. Um, and we need to be able to sort of still facilitate our clients' needs. So uh, we've we've been training those guys up. They've been on a lot of the early work. They've been doing a lot of uh, training on site at our, uh, our office. Our office is based on a farm. So we're, we're quite lucky we can get them out in the fields and get them on the tractors, get them doing their training courses. Um, you know, so they're, these young lads are loving it. They're really, really loving stuff and there's a few few people who are new to our industry as well um and so we've got the, all of our customers will see some new faces um but these these guys are, are doing great and they, they're really enjoying being in our industry so i hope uh, i hope they they keep that up and they stay with us for a long time well you obviously enjoy being in the industry david that comes across through this chat um i know you've got a hell of a lot to do so I, i'll let you get on with that and uh, and dealing with uh, your pressure time of the year and uh, you know maybe after the summer uh, when things are back to normal we can catch up face to face and I really look forward to that it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today pleasure to speak to you again yeah yeah that was that'd be uh, that'd be great that'd be great thank you